Hello good people and welcome back to Level Up Your Opening. Today we're going to look at a weapon for black against C4 or D4 that leads to dynamic results. It's none other than the Dutch Defense. Let's level up our ELO. Let's get it! Round 1. Fight! Hey guys, just a quick recap. So the Dutch Defense, from black's perspective, we got D4 or C4 and then the immediate F5. The surprising push of the pawn diagonal to the king. And it makes it looking like the light squares are weak, but that's the characteristic of Dutch defense. And after that, knight to f6, knight to f3, e6. Uh, with development of bishop to e7, push here, castle, that kind of structure. Oh, before I begin and before I forget, if you do like this content, find it helpful and tolerable, and it's helping your ELO, please leave a like and sub. You have my gratitude. First position, we're going to look at uh, the Dutch defense, or somewhat of a variant of it, from black's perspective with c4 and the immediate f5 g3 the opponent fianchettos thinking developing the bishop there we have knight to f6 quick net development attacking e4 twice bishop to g2 and now g6 we also fianchetto here is black of course the intention is to keep the bishop here Knight to f3, bishop to g7, castle king, castle king. Both have completed their development. So where do we go as black here? Opponent plays d4. We play d6. There's tension there in the middle. Knight to c3, and now c6. Just slow developing moves. Uh, white has a center. We prevent the center from being fully occupied. And of course, if we look, both sides have an active fianchetto. So now d5 by the opponent in this variation we got queen to a8 uh queen to e8 sorry idea is to use the queen as uh, a means to defend if we need to push and make uh, a pawn break there on e5 queen to c2 you can see there's tension in the e4 square knight to a6 a maneuver so that we can control c5 there maybe transfer back here to add, add tension lots of lines to d5 but here rook to b1 was played in this line and now we go with the e5 uh, just asking white what do you want to do i have the center here and i intend to expand further or just keep the tension here takes bishop takes now we have fully developed this is kind of our weaker pawn after that capture and developing move, bishop to e6, takes on e6. The opponent plays b3 with the intention, of course, of another fianchetto on the dark squares to challenge this bishop, but also develop that bishop. And here we strike as black with knight to e4. Strong move. And looks like after quick calc, after takes, after takes, takes, and takes. I don't know why Leeches is doing that. We're giving up a pawn there but that is a highly poisoned pawn and it helps us gain territory why is that poisoned because of this light square here so if we go through with that idea takes 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 stop doing that lee chess you have the immediate bishop to f5 f yeah like okay i can just capture but sure where does the rook go after really nice trappy setup actually so after b3 we play knight to e4 you can't touch it that's a poisoned poison pawn at least with the capture in the game of course white was a little smarter takes and hits and now knight to g5 was the idea trying to disarm that the venom of that pawn by not capturing it and having another piece to its name there and you simply defend with f5 in this line at least sure white decides to to take the pawn that's actually a really questionable move we're gonna label that with the tomato sauce that's uh that's a blunder and i'll let you guys have a look at the position we have two bishops here with this bishop maximizing tension on e5 what is the killer tactic why this line is quite promising for black in terms of counterplay? What does black play here and what did black play here to win a piece? 
I'll let you guys figure it out in three, two, and one. Black plays, knight to b4. Strong move. Not quite brilliant, but strong move. Because now what? You attack the queen, which defends this, and your queen and on e8 is attacking e5. So after that move, simply takes attacking. And after the bishop there, after takes, you are down that piece. We have an open file here. It's just, life is great. Life is great. Now on to position number two. He plays black. Again, of course. It's a weapon for black. Why not? Knight to f3, the ready. And we uh, meet the ready with f5, the Dutch defense. c4, controlling d5. We got knight to f6, attacking e4. That's twice. g3, d6, d4, and now e6. Now the formation is complete. Idea is to develop here on e7, castle, transfer the queen to e8. Bishop to g2, bishop to e7, castle, king, castle, king, knight to c3. As you can tell, uh, we've expanded our pawn structure this way. There's tension in the middle. How do we meet that? We meet that with queen to e8. Idea is here. And later, if, need to, if we need to support the pawn, maybe pawn pushes. Rook to e1, and at this point, the idea is to prevent this pawn push, because that's territory. If you open that up, our queen is in that side. If you open that up, uh, it's advantage white. So we block it. Awkwardly enough, we'll end up with a double pawn, but that's okay. So queen to c2 attacking once, twice. Queen to g6, at least in this line. Knight to b5, trying to poke holes. You could defend this way, but here, black defender knight to d2, developing in that sense, attacking this way after. And you have uh, knight to d2, attacking once, twice, and three times, just piling the pressure there. Just booting this. And here is uh, crossroads, because this is being attacked, and maybe you can attack this with a finishing bishop to e4. In this variation, white did take. So now the question is, do you take here or you take here? And it's stronger to take with this move. Keeping this threatened and now kind of asking white, hey, maybe you can attack my queen here. Which is actually a mistake. If they take, thinking with tempo and you can snipe here. Well, notice we have this. This is an open file. So what do we do? Well, this, we keep threatening that because it's still threatened. It's it's kind of hanging. Our queen's hanging, so we just slide the queen, attacking this. And after the queen shuffle, the idea becomes clear. You gave up that pawn because you're still attacking here, and now this is unprotected. So if you uh, if you're a fool, <laughs> after that you uh, lose the rook. And if you defend here or defend on d2. And you simply lose a piece in your down material. So, no, that's uh, that's tough. After takes here, the opponent moved the knight away. Knight to c3, which looks logical. Except it's not. It looks logical because attack once, twice, and three times. They forgot, they as in the opponent forgot that this is an open file. So, I'll let you guys figure out the killer tactic here. Have a look at the position. And can you guess the brilliant move in three, two, one? In this line, Black played the quiet but really earth shattering e3. e3, brilliant move. The queen's exposed. And if you take, yeah, you get. You can't, you can't go here because you'll get checkmated. So if you go here, takes with check, and now you're up a whopping rook. And if you do anything else, like try to stop this, well, your queen's hanging, and the game's over. Just 
absolutely crushing. Anyways, those are two interesting lines we have for black using a Dutch-like or Dutch defense. Hope that was helpful. I'll see you guys later. Double peace.